First of all, thank you again and thank you for the opportunity to, to be here today uh, and to discuss um, the financial institution and financial um, trends in the South and, and uh, East Mediterranean region. I um, will try to reflect on some of the things that uh, both Mr. Moss and Mr. Galal have said, but I also will try a little bit more to stick to the uh, to the script that uh, I've received from, from the conference organizer. And I will try to talk about um, what kind of challenges and uh, prospects the South and Eastern Mediterranean um, area financial system face in the context of uh, global and regional development. And I will um, take somewhat of a narrow uh, definition of South and East Mediterranean uh, going from Morocco to Lebanon, so to speak, um, and not uh, include Israel and Turkey in the references I will make, uh, both because I'm ignorant and also because they are different countries in that they have much closer relationship with the European Union, and I, I don't think I would be able to um, make many sensible regional uh, statements, as Mr. Moss suggested. They are difficult enough. Uh, to make, and I think I, I want to try to um, not to stay too far away from, from that. What I, will, I would like to try to do today is to make a case that against the um, backdrop of mediocre uh, prospect, to use the terminology that the IMF has used in the recent uh, World Economic Outlook, the financial sector in these countries has a very important role to play to help revive growth, and I will try to point out that some of the uh, policies that can help do that in, um, in, the, in the near term. And just to start with where I'm going to end, I think I will uh, highlight some of the thing, same things that Mr. Moss highlighted, um, which are the need for more competition in the financial system, um, the need for a reduced role and a clear mandate for the public banks, which are a big presence in the, in the financial systems in these countries. The need to develop um, more non-bank and non-traditional financial institutions and uh, instruments, and I think Mr. Moss mentioned Islamic finance, and this is something I also would like to go back to, as they are important uh, to serve the economy as a whole, but again, as, as was said, because they are important to serve better small and medium enterprises. And then lastly, I would like to comment on the fact that we need a better business environment because it's very difficult for the financial sector alone uh, to revive growth if there isn't demand from good bankable uh, projects on, on the other side of, of the equation. So this is where, where I'm going to go. So let me start very briefly with the global developments. Um, we have recently released our updated microeconomic forecast. We've called growth uh, mediocre because it's again fallen short of our expectations and we have revised our forecast down. Uh, this is still pretty much uh, across the world. And um, you know, to put it very simply, we find ourselves uh, six years after the crisis the recovery is still fragile, it's still uneven, and there's still uncertainty in the global outlook going forward. Uh, these uncertainties have manifested themselves very recently in, in these weeks uh, in heightened financial market volatility, including in stock markets and foreign exchange markets. Um, so uh, this is you know, our short-term projection. We do forecast that growth will rebound somewhat uh, next year, but we also see a number of geopolitical risks that may make that harder, going from uh, the geopolitical risks in, you know, with Russia and Ukraine and on the one hand and our own geopolitical risks in the Middle East. Um, we see the risk of secular stagnation in the advanced economy. We see the risk that um, emerging countries may uh, not be able to sustain and recover growth if um, policy making is complicated and delayed and doesn't address actual constraints. We see uh, some risks, although not 
critical to this part of the world on uh, more financial market volatility and increase in funding costs for emerging markets as uh, central, big central banks like the Fed normalize uh, their monetary policy, or as I should say, as they normalize their monetary policy. And so there is a, for, this country, for the countries in this region, the balance of these um, global risks has in, could have important implication of, for oil prices, which have already been falling in the last few weeks. And oil prices, as you very well know, matter greatly in the region. On the one hand, for Algeria, uh, which is the oil and gas exporter in this group, but also for the other countries, which are all oil importers, um, because a lower price of oil is, will, would be good for their trade and fiscal balance, but it would be bad for other things like the remittances, foreign direct investment, and also bilateral aid. So um, what does this mean for uh, the southern and eastern shores of, of the Mediterranean? Um, we are concerned also that growth prospects there will be mediocre. Uh, we expect growth to remain um, very modest in 2014. We, we expect it to pick up modestly in 2015. Um, but in the region as well, there are a number of risks to, to the downside. And in, in any way, even if our mediocre forecast turn out to be um, good, as someone mentioned earlier, uh, growth rates that are forecast in the region are simply not enough to deliver on what, um, on what matters most, which is reduce enough growth to reduce unemployment, which is the challenge number one and has also important implication for the northern shores of the Mediterranean, as we very well know. So um, despite uh, accelerated reforms, despite some um, progress that have been uh, achieved in these countries in terms of reining in fiscal and current account deficits, some courageous uh, reforms in uh, reducing inequitable energy subsidies, as Mr. Galal has, has mentioned, for example, in Egypt, but in other countries as well. Um, we are still going to have a region having to navigate a difficult, uh, a difficult environment uh, in a situation where debt to the GDP ratios are high for most countries and where international reserves, uh, again, in, in many countries are still thin. So improvements, but not yet, in a sense, enough improvement that we can um, relax. Um, so uh, what, what are the implications of the prospects, of these prospects for a modest recovery for the, financial, for the financial sector? On the one hand, I think we can expect subdued credit growth, but on the other hand, I think we also need to expect and, and, and request the financial sector to play a bigger role in um, helping revive growth in these countries. Um, just again, very quickly, um, what are these financial uh, sector trends uh, in the region that um, we should reflect on? As was said already, uh, as most countries, these countries have financial systems that are bank dominated. But in a sense, what's really striking is not so much that they're bank dominated, but that um, debt markets. Um, capital markets in general, the non-banking sector, the non-traditional instrument, the leasing, the factory, are really, are really underdeveloped. And that's a striking difference with many other emerging, uh, emerging markets. <clears throat> the other uh, striking characteristics uh, that I would like to stress here is that government still play a very big role in the banking sector. And that, um, I think the Algeria is, in, in this group of countries, the country of the extreme, um, where 86% uh, of banking system assets are accounted for by public banks. Uh, and the other extreme, we have Lebanon, where instead we don't have, uh, we don't have public banks. What does this do? This results in the lack of competition that was mentioned earlier. It results in very high concentration both on the asset side and also on the, on the loan side. 
we have in the region that um, the top five banks hold in excess of 50% of total banking system assets. That's really large and it's not common in the rest of the emerging economies. Now, the other side of the same coin is that the system is fairly stable. Um, in aggregate solvent, uh, high um, uh, capital asset ratios, uh, even though not as high as probably they should need given, to be given the uh, uncertainties uh, in the region, uh, may be overstated because there is a large share of um, public sector debt on the, on the balance sheets of the banks. Um, banks are also modestly profitable, but again, uh, there are certainly fragilities, and Tunisia is one of, I guess, the banking sector where we, are, uh, we should be most concerning about since we have um, uh, some six banks uh, that do not meet yet the minimum uh, capital threshold. Um, the other fact that I think we need to keep in mind is that the system still has a, a significant level, of, is characterized by a significant uh, level of credit risk. Uh, Non-performing loans have been coming down in most countries, but from high level, they remain high. Uh, in some countries, they may be, uh, non-performing loans may be understated. Uh, because the requirements are um, not, uh, in a sense, sharp enough. And um, as I said earlier, there is a high exposure to government securities in, in the banks of some of these countries, and Egypt and Lebanon, I think, uh, stand out there. But I think the most interesting thing um, in terms of the relationship, in my mind, in the relationship between the financial sector and what you can do to girls is this paradox uh, that uh, intermediate, financial intermediation is high in the region, and at the same time, access is low. This is not new, um, and it's been um, something going on for some time, but it does um, have, I think, implication on about how we want to think uh, the role of the financial sector to revive growth in the region um, going far, uh, forward. And I think we would all agree that we want to, um, yeah, let me if I'm running low, late. Um, I think we all agree that we want to strengthen resilience, we want to strengthen development, but um, we want to um, deal with this uh, limited competition and high concentration. We want to strengthen weak financial in infrastructure. We want to improve insolvency framework. We want to the financial system to develop instruments more suited to small and medium enterprises. <clears throat> And we want also at the macro level to reduce the crowding out um, of the private sector uh, by uh, public debt. But um, rather than going to a long list of, of uh, recommendations that I think we should be generally familiar with, I would like to close with, with um, commenting on, on on the, again, closing with, with a comment on the relationship between uh, the characteristics of the financial sector in the region and what it means for growth. <clears throat> we know that the financial sector um, reform agenda has been in progress for a long time, uh, and that a lot of progress has been made in different pieces of it in different countries, the diversity that we were talking about. But we also know that it's generally incomplete. And Analytical work that has been done, for example, in this city by, by, um, by the Institute, suggests that um, financial sector reform works, delivers results on the ground, when there is a critical mass of improvement in the financial sector. F fixing a piece, fixing, say, um, weak uh, financial infrastructure without doing enough to promote competition it's not to openness, to reducing the role of bank, of publicly owned bank, and so on. It's just not going to be enough. We need to look at financial sector reform as something that needs to make progress across a broad spectrum of, of, uh, of um, issues. And secondly, um, 
we need to also look at what is going to make financial sector reform successful in terms of reviving growth in other parts of the economy. And there I would like to go back to the role that private sector reform needs to play to complement what progress can be achieved by reforming uh, the financial sector. And as I said at the beginning, it, given the paradox of um, high intermediation and low access, given the characteristics of the banking sectors in the region, I feel I'll go back to stress the four issues I, stressed, I started with. One is we need to do more to promote competition, uh, and there is a whole set of uh, things we can do. Uh, in this context, we need to reduce the role of government banks, and by the way, we also need to clarify their mandate. Clearly, public banks have a role to play, but that role needs to be clearly defined and serve public interest. Third, we need to look at new instrument, alternative finance, uh, non-bank finance. We need the system to serve better small and medium enterprises. And last, we do need to look outside the financial sector at complementary uh, policies that can, in fact, magnify whatever progress we can make on the financial sector. Thank you very much.